Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Right next to me here, I've got a log splitter from Harbor Freight. It's the electric five ton log splitter. It runs off a little 120 volt motor here. I say little, it's actually a pretty good sized 120 volt motor with a hydraulic pump on the back. I've already checked it, got to make sure the uh, vents open, looked over the operation manual because it is something I'm pretty unfamiliar with. I, you know, as far as I know, it looks ready to go. So the biggest thing I wanna figure out right now is what this log splitter is capable of. And in my searches throughout YouTube, because I do consume YouTube content similar to mine, something I could just not find anywhere is anybody kind of demonstrating, going through with different types of wood, different sizes, what this log splitter is capable of? I have not even cycled the cylinder here, and, and so it's all brand new to me. I have no experience with it. I literally just pulled it out of the box probably 20, 30 minutes ago. But yeah, definitely one of the big things I would like to know about this log splitter is what is it capable of splitting? And that was one of the big reasons why I reached out to Harbor Freight to see if I could get one of these things. So what we're gonna be splitting here is starting off with some Aspen. I don't know if you guys in the East have Aspen or have any familiarity with it. Uh, over here in the West, up here at the top of our mountains, this stuff grows like crazy. So the sizes we've got here is roughly a six inch Aspen. That's what, about 18 inches long? exactly 18, 18 inches long since i'm here this next round is 14 and a half inches long so a little bit shorter and we're sitting out about how wide so about 11 inches wide this is some of the easiest splitting wood i have ever split in my entire life i say some of it it is by far the easiest splitting wood. As you can tell, it's already pre-split. This is just what happens to this wood. There's always a crack down to about the center of the wood. So it's gonna be very, very easy to split or it should be very easy to split. So the woods that I cut from has two types of pine <clears throat> that's pretty common around there. Uh, there is a third, but it was not, I didn't really hardly see it around where I was at. But they have a lot of ponderosa pine and then a lot of Douglas fir. And I'm pretty sure that this is Doug fir because most of what was around there was Doug fir. And uh, it kind of seems to have more of the characteristics of the Doug fir and a lot of, most of the bark that I had was definitely not that really uh, dark bark that the Ponderosa pine has. I'm not sure which is, you know, a better firewood between the two. They're probably pretty much the same. Probably give off the same amount of BTUs. But uh, this, is, this is definitely a lot harder split than the Aspen. Not that pine's a hard to split wood, but it's a little bit harder. We're at a nine inch round there. And once again, about 11 inch, 11 and a half. It's, I'll just call it a 12 inch round there. And the last wood is here behind the log splitter. You'll get a better look at it when I put it up on the splitter. Is some very difficult stuff to split. Some of the hardest wood I've ever had to split by hand in my life. And that is Siberian elm. It is very common over here in the Western United States. Uh, especially in the higher elevations. Uh, we get a lot of this stuff throughout Utah, Idaho, New Mexico. Um, it's very commonly called Chinese elm, but I've uh, recently learned that it's actually Siberian elm. We call it Chinese elm incorrectly. This is a Siberian elm uh, log. It's extremely difficult to split. The grain of the wood is all intertwined with itself. It's not a really straight grain wood, I guess I would describe it. I'm, I'm far from a, a wood aficionado of any kind. But uh, it's very difficult to split. So we're gonna start with, pretty sure it will do, I don't know, this stuff's so squirrely. I don't know if I'll get a good measurement on it. It looks to be about a four inch log. This, you know, I could go this way and call it 12 inch, but we'll go this way. There is uh, what I've heard a lot of people call a crotch here. Two different pieces of wood growing into each other. So they're about five inches there. And then I think I've got about a, well, if we get rid of the bark, now nah, we'll call it six inch piece of wood there. I do have some thicker stuff of this, but none of it is seasoned at all. It's all freshly cut. A lot of people consider this to be trash firewood around here. It absolutely stinks. Um, not that it, you know, basically what they say is elm wood picks up whatever the smell is around it. It just has a real earthy kind of dirty smell to it. So I just make sure to put it on last at the end of the night because it does make a decent uh, burning firewood. It burns for a long time compared to these other softwoods. But I, I don't mind it. I'm kind of a get my hands on whatever I can get my hands on type of firewood guy. So this is going to be the last wood that we split and it's going to be a lot more difficult to split than either of the other two woods. All right, starting off with the 18 inch Aspen, I'm going to try and split away from opposite of where that crack is just to see how it runs. That was a piece of 
piece of cake. So two nice pieces of firewood there. Once again, I do kind of have a crack here. I'm gonna try and stay away from that crack or the opposite of that crack. See how this goes. Pretty easy for it. Splits nice and even. It did a good job on the aspen. I had no doubts that it would be that way. So we're moving on to the pine. I don't remember what size this one is. It's pretty large. No pre splits in it that I can see. If you think that's a split there, that's just a defect in my firewood cutting. Should be a little bit more this should be a little bit more difficult for it. I could definitely hear it trying harder. Okay, now we're on to the uh, 12 inch round here. That looks like maybe a little split there. This is uh, pretty dried out wood. It's gonna be hard not to get a split. We'll just go there. Now let's let it go a little further. Moving on to the Siberian Elm, I'm interested to see this. Uh, this is the, what, like four inch piece? So hopefully this will kind of, well, it didn't. They're just very, very tightly packed. It's very tough wood. And uh, it just doesn't split easy. It's very pretty on the inside though, if you ask me. We'll split it right there on the crotch. Wow, well, that was honestly pretty downright impressive. If you ask me. I've had a lot of trouble splitting down that part of the tree when I've tried splitting these things in the past. Most difficult piece of this wood, of course, I do have like big 14, 16 inch rounds of this stuff. Like I said, it's not seasoned, otherwise I would use it. impressed because that's doing a great job on this tough wood. The fact that I wasn't able to stop this log splitter definitely makes me want to go out and try a little harder. Get a little bit bigger piece of this wood even if it's not uh, even if it's not seasoned yet. This has been sitting out for a little over a year. Well, maybe right at about a year. So it's pretty dry on the inside. Let's, uh, let's try and split it one more time right there. You see how gnarly that stuff is? It's some tough, hard wood. Let me go find something bigger and see if we can get this thing to stop to actually figure out its limitations. All right, this is a pretty good sized, dense piece of wood. Not very long, it's only about 12 inches long. It's hard to get good long lengths of this stuff. It's a little bit easier to split when it's a little bit shorter. So when I get big logs with this stuff, you know, not knowing that I'd have a log splitter to split them with, I did split them a little bit smaller, so it's roughly a 12 inch log. Wow, barely even slowed it down.
Yeah, this stuff just doesn't want to let go of each other. Whew. All right, well, I am 110% impressed. Yeah, this stuff doesn't really want to come apart. I can't even think of a harder to split wood. Growing up, we burned a lot of uh, Utah juniper or shaggy bark juniper, whichever you'd like to call it. And that was some pretty uh, gnarly stuff to split too. And it actually kind of splits in a similar way to this. Back to the shaggy bark juniper, that stuff's pretty stinking hard to split too. Uh, all the wood grain is really interwoven with each other. That stuff I, you know, would fight and fight and fight growing up to split. And uh, it's a great firewood. That stuff's definitely a great firewood. I'd love to get my hands on some of it. Uh, there's plenty of it around us. It just seems like mostly everything's standing green. And the Forest Service won't let you cut it down. And also, most of it, the surf, uh, most of it in this area is on private land, not on Forest Service land. So uh, it's, I'm not gonna say hard to get, but you know, I'd have to work for it a little bit. Can't just go get a wood permit and pick it up. We definitely might run into some kind of log in the future that this thing can't do. I would not be surprised if with some of the really big uh, Siberian elm logs that it won't really struggle with those. My big 18, I've got some probably in the 20 inch inch range. They're huge old big heavy logs. Maybe they're not that big, but they're, they're good size. I bet it'll struggle with those a little bit, but just being able to split that, man, this thing's got pretty good capabilities. So this isn't necessarily a review, although I am talking about the power it has. But when it does come to things like this, I, I really usually am pretty interested in how long it lasts. That's what I'm concerned about. We will definitely do a review in the future on this thing. I don't plan on keeping it in the shop. I just kept it in the shop because it's, you know, I don't know, 7 p.m., dark outside, maybe later than that. Yeah, I definitely think uh, I'll, I'll get the rest of this winters. I've got, I don't know, probably three or four cords sitting here at my house of wood that needs to be split up by this thing and the hand splitter. With the Aspen, I almost think it's easier just to use the hand splitter unless I'm doing kindling. Kindling is difficult to split, but that, that Aspen will split with just one hit with the splitting mall it's very very easy and it'll just be faster than waiting for this thing but when it comes to even the pine this thing will probably be worth pulling out i don't have as much pine as i do aspen but i do have tons of this uh, siberian now i probably got a full cord worth of it laying around here so give me a lot of wood splitting to do with this thing and uh, i'm excited to have it super thrilled about it so far but uh, an actual review on quality long-term use you know thoughts that'll all come down in the future in a future video for now i'm impressed with it and i'm happy to have it thanks for watching guys if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up if you're not a subscriber go down click subscribe whichever side it's on and i'll see you in the next video